I go sing? Yeah. Just yeah. Everybody. Everybody. That's not in my notes. Uh, would you stand and sing number 302? Is that right? It's not in my notes, so. Anyway, 302. <laughs> Just let the old man up here, and then, you know, he's just going to mess everything up. <laughs> oh, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Uh, why don't you just take a moment and just shake hands with someone around you this morning? Maybe people that you've not met or you don't know. Just say hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for taking that time, getting to know one another. My name is Dan. I'm the care pastor here at Troy Church. And so we welcome you, whether you're joining us online. I don't know which camera it's coming from. And if you're here in person, thank you for being here. If you're a guest in front of you, in the pockets of the chair in front of you, of course, front row, you don't have a pocket in front of you, but there are, are slips that you can fill out as guest card. We'd appreciate if you'd fill that out and you can place it in the offering or take it to the back at the Welcome Center. Is that the back, the front? come in um, and drop it out. We've got a gift for you. So we want to make sure that you are aware of that. After the service, if you would like, uh, you could have a picture taken out front, uh, either for our directory, if you, or you maybe update your picture in the directory, uh, or maybe just have a photo for yourself for Easter. 
Um, so stop by after the service over in that corner and you can have your picture taken. So if you would, would you, I think that's all the announcements, would you, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, on this blessed Easter Sunday, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and joy. Lord, we rejoice in the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we gather with loved ones and fellow believers, we're reminded of the glorious victory over sin and death. May we never forget the incredible sacrifice that Jesus made for our salvation. Help us to experience the transformative power of your love and strength of our faith. Use us as your instruments of peace and love in the world. May our lives be a testament to the power of your resurrection as we seek to follow you faithfully. In the precious name of Christ Jesus, we pray. And God's people said, amen. amen. If you would, would you stand once again and sing number 322, Up From the Grave He Arose. Uh, remain standing if you would and watch the monitors for our next song. It's entitled, uh, Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery.
from Luke 24, verses 1 through 6. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared, and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about, suddenly two men clothed that gleam, men clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. receive our offering at this time and so as the ushers prepare to receive your gifts remember that all that we are able to offer to our community and even to the world even like was it two Saturdays ago 40,000 meals were prepared here that would go across the globe so on this Easter Sunday let's be grateful and thankful for all that God has done and what he does through his people so if you would join me in prayer. Holy God, we come on this resurrection morning so grateful what a price you paid. And so as we are able to give back to you just a portion, just a portion of what you have blessed us with, may you use it to further your kingdom. May you use it to reach out to the poor and the needy the widows, the orphans, and may you receive glory for all that is done. For it is in his precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.
wonderful music and singing. Uh, uh, my, my voice went to all ranges on Up From The Grave Here Rose. Anybody else like that? You're like high, you're low, I, I love it. Uh, happy Easter, welcome again to Troy Methodist Church. Uh, my name is Andy, I'm privileged to be the senior pastor of this great church family and I am so glad that you are here uh, to proclaim that he is risen. Uh, a special welcome to those of you who are newer or visiting today. Uh, so glad that, that you are, are here, um, especially if this is your first time. We are honored that you have chosen to uh, uh, worship with us on this uh, beautiful Easter morning. I hope that you'll grab uh, a gift uh, on your way out today. They're just on a tabletop, a mug with, with some uh, other goodies. Please grab one. We have plenty. I'd lo love to have you uh, take that gift uh, with you today. And welcome to those of you gathered online. Uh, I really wish that you were here in person to sit in the front row uh, right here. That's about it uh, that there's space for. A couple other seats uh, around. Uh, actually, what's funny is that front row was filled in our sunrise service uh, by some of the young people. So, uh, but, but wherever you are on this Easter, a uh, happy, happy Easter to you. Um, you, you know what Easter's all about, don't you? Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not about opening weekend of Major League Baseball. Go Cubs. Uh, it's, Easter isn't about, you know, bunnies or jelly beans, although we sure do trick our kids into thinking that sometimes, don't we? Uh, uh, Easter isn't about extra days off school or Cadbury eggs or pretty dresses or spring pictures or, or anything like that. Easter is the church's celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus conquering the grave is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. Everything hinges upon that. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then your faith and mine is futile. And that's what the, the Bible teaches us, that, that, oh, pity on them if Jesus did not really rise from from the dead. We believe Jesus died on the cross, was buried in a tomb, and on the third day, he rose from the dead. Now, if you're here today and somebody kind of dragged you and, and you're like, oh, I got to dress up again and go to church. Um, if that's you today and you're not sure that you believe that Jesus really rose from the dead. Uh, first off, thanks for being honest uh, about that. I'm not going to have you raise your hands, uh, uh, but, but thanks for being honest. I'm, I'm really glad that you're here. You know, in our church, this, I like to think this is a safe place to kind of explore uh, the, the, you know, the, the merits of the Christian faith on, on your own pace. We really emphasize a journey with Jesus here. And some of us are just considering beginning that journey. Others of us have been on that journey for a really long time. But, you know, something that we all have in common is we all still have questions. We all still wrestle with stuff regarding our faith. In fact, uh, next week, we're starting a seven-week series that, that you all designed with the questions that you have, that you really want to see responded to from a biblical perspective. We're calling it, You Asked For It. And you'll receive one of these cards, uh, just kind of an invite card on your way out, uh, among uh, some other things, which you'll hear about later. But it's got the lineup of all the questions. Uh, so I invite you to come back and join us. There are a lot of relevant questions for our everyday lives that, that you all asked, and I'm praying to God uh, as, as, we, <laughs> as we prepare the sermons for the next few weeks. But, uh, but one question that we are not responding to in that series is, did Jesus really rise from the grave? Uh, my answer to that question is yes. Our, our church believes yes. But if, if you're not sure about that belief or the evidence for such a belief, uh, feel free to grab one of these books uh, on your way out. It's uh, opposite the gifts on the other side. It's uh, called The Case for Easter. It's less than 100 pages long. And if you were honest about saying you're not sure if you believe in the resurrection, uh, be honest enough to explore uh, some, some solid evidence that can lead a rational a uh, scientific-minded person to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So grab one of those on your way out today. That's a, it's a gift from us if, if you have those types of questions. Uh, but make no mistake about it, Easter is about the victory that Jesus won over the grave. E Easter is about the victory, his victory, Jesus' victory, 
over sin and death. Thanks be to God. Uh, The great news about Easter is that no matter how bad things have been, no matter how bad things look in your life right now, your story is not over. Because of his great love for you, Jesus defeated your greatest enemies. The the, the sin which separates you from God and, and death, like the final enemy that destroys life. But in Jesus, there is victory over sin and death because he won uh, that victory on the cross and through the empty tomb. And as the song goes, there's victory in Jesus, my savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. So, so I just wanna ask you as we start off this morning, could you use some victory in your life? You know, I tell you, I was really pulling for an Illini victory yesterday. <laughs> really, really. But I'm, I'm not talking about the victory of your favorite sports team. How, how about some victory in the things that really matter? I mean, could you stand to conquer those bad habits in your life, the sin that, that so easily entangles? How about overcoming discouragement and instead have more joy in your life, even in the midst of the most difficult of circumstances? And wouldn't you love to defeat the the plague of anxiety that, that just clouds so many of our lives, worry that we carry just about losing what we have, our, our, our life, our love, uh, the, those that we hold precious to us? You know, what, what do you think about overcoming and overthrowing shame and and grief and despair in order to have real hope for your future, Uh, hope even beyond the grave. Want some victory over sin? Want to conquer sadness and grief and replace it with joy? Want to to have victory over worry and anxiety or defeat those those things that rob you of hope? I I think we could all use some victory like that in our lives. Well, the good news of the gospel is that because of God's great love for us, we are invited to experience the same victory that Jesus experienced over sin and death. And that's the scripture's promise to us that those victories are ours in Jesus. He invites us to share in those. And he, in Christ, there's victory over sin, all, all of those, those things that tear us and others down. Those attitudes and behaviors that, that seem appealing in the moment, but really prevent us from living the life that God created us for. And in Christ, we also find that, that death has not vi- no victory over us. There, there is hope beyond the grave because he, of his resurrection, which he invites us into. The, the scriptures say that, that those are our victories in Christ. So why is it that so often in our life we experience defeat? And no, this isn't the time to bring up the fact that I'm a Chicago sports fan. Um, uh, But seriously, why why don't we more often live in the victorious life that Jesus offers? Why are we regularly caught up in the same broken cycles, the same painful patterns of relating to the world and and to those around us? Why are our lives often dominated by losing to temptation or, or being defeated by anxiety or, or having our joy stolen from us by those difficult circumstances we find ourselves in? Well, why, why does anger get the best of us or envy dominate our thought life? You know, what is it that, that seems to be having the upper hand in your life these days? Is it something that I've mentioned? Maybe addiction or anger, or anxiety, a, a sense of, of being out of control, maybe a broken relationship. Or maybe you're thinking, checkbox, checkbox, all of the above. You know, no matter what seems to be dominating your life these days, I've got good news for you today. There is, there is victory in Jesus. But, but hear this, uh, I, to, I mean, we've been singing about it. It's been great. Like, I want it. <laughs> I don't know about you. I want that victory in Jesus. But the only way to experience that victory in Jesus in your life is to take the same path that Jesus took. 
to that victory. The same path that led him to victory over sin and death. The same victory that he invites us to experience with him. We've got to take that same path. What is that path? Well, let me take you back a few days uh, before the women found the tomb empty. Uh, We rewind three days to Jesus' last supper with his disciples. Uh, this This was before Jesus was arrested. Definitely, it was before his crucifixion. And Jesus had spent the last three years with these disciples whom, whom he handpicked to follow him. And that night with his disciples, he shared a meal with them, the, the Last Supper. He washed their feet as a servant would. He called them his friends. He prayed for them. And he shared the Jewish Passover meal with them, in in which at one point he he deviated from the the tradition and and took bread and and he broke it. And he gave it to them to eat. And he said, this is my body, which is about to be broken for you. And he took a cup and he said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. And Jesus Jesus knew what what he was about to endure. And he was trying to convey that to them. reveal that to them. It was an intimate gathering, a a heartfelt gathering. And then Jesus uh, took them uh, from that place away to pray at the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives, just outside the city. And Gethsemane uh, means uh, the crushing. That's that's, uh, a fitting name uh, as the Bible records that Jesus there told his disciples that He was overwhelmed. He was being crushed. He was overwhelmed to the point of death. Now, Luke's version, which uh, I will read here in a moment, doesn't include that, but I think you'll get the same idea. This is uh, Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 39. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Jesus was at this place of crushing, and his soul was being crushed. He he was in anguish as he prayed, so much anguish that that he sweat drops of blood. Friends, this is the path that Jesus took to victory. The, The same path that you and I must take if we are to share in that victory of Jesus. Now, you might be thinking, what? Wait, wait a second here, Pastor Andy. Are you, are you telling me that to share in Jesus' victory, we need to pray so hard that we sweat blood? That, no, that's not really what I'm saying. Although if I said yes, would you try? Uh, no, 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 that's not, that's not what I mean. Uh, here, here's really what I want you to remember today. Your victory is, is determined between the if and the yet. Whether or not you experience the victory of Jesus is determined between the if and the yet. Let's look. This is what I mean. Let's look at Jesus' path. Verse 42, as Jesus was praying to his heavenly father, he said this. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Right here is Jesus' if. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. What what, what is this cup? Uh, Same metaphor Uh, as the Passover meal that Jesus just shared with his disciples. That the cup is representative of suffering, of calamity, even of death. That that same cup, uh, Jesus saying, this is my blood shed for you. This, This is a cup of suffering. And Jesus was asking his heavenly father to take it from him if he was willing. Jesus made it clear to his father that he did not want to go through the pain of the cross, 
This is why he's overwhelmed to the point of death. Folks, this is why he was sweating blood. Jesus is asking his father if he is willing to take this suffering from his path. But you'll recall that's not the end of Jesus' prayer. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. If you are willing, yet not my will, but yours be done. Lord, if there is another way, yet not my will, but yours be done. If it's possible, can we just skip the cross? Yet not my will, but yours be done. Now, Jesus determined his victory over sin and death between the if and the yet. And he did so by surrendering his will for his Father's will. Friends, this is the path of victory, the victory of Easter. Jesus waved the white flag. He waved the white flag of surrender. And if we want to experience the victory of Easter, we must wave the white flag of surrender too. And experiencing the ongoing victorious life of Christ means waving the white flag every time those ifs arise in our life. And there are plenty of them. Father, if we could just do this humility thing another way, could we do that? If possible, Lord, could we maybe just fudge on this whole sexual purity thing so I can let my eyes go down the path of looking at pornography just this one time? If you're willing, Lord, could you just make it okay for me to have revenge on this person? I mean, he's a really bad guy. If it's all right, God, would it be cool if I called myself a Christian? but really found my identity in other things, things like my, my wealth or my status or my job. If it's okay with you, God, how about I just skip over the whole acknowledging my sin thing? Because let's face it, I'm not nearly as bad as these other people. And, and doesn't it just make more sense to try to be a good person and that way get into your kingdom? Lay down my life, Lord? If you're willing, how about you just let me stay in charge of things? I, I kind of like being in control. Folks, we are faced with these kinds of ifs all the time. Every day, we are faced with situations where it would be more convenient, less painful, and a lot easier to do things our own way than to trust in God's way. But the path to victory comes when we wave the white flag whenever those ifs come our way. Waving the white flag means we move from the if to the yet through surrender. Lord, I want to do things my own way. Yet, your will be done. I surrender. I raise the white flag. Not my will, but yours be done. That's the path. That is the path, the path of surrender that Jesus took, and it won him and us the victory of Easter. If we trust him enough to take the same path, that, that path of surrender. And, and you know what? That, that was always Jesus' call to his disciples. I mean, maybe, maybe you remember uh, these words of Jesus. Just uh, you go back 12 chapters or so from, from this if yet decision of Jesus, uh, he called his disciples. He, he said to them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Deny yourself, take up your cross. That sounds an awful lot like the same thing. Surrender your will for mine and endure the temporary pain and inconvenience that entails. You know, I'm willing to bet that the areas of your life, and, uh, and I bet this because I can see it in my own life at times, the areas of your life where you are not experiencing the victory that Jesus offers are probably the same areas that you haven't yet fully surrendered to the Lord and his ways in. I, I could be wrong in that, 
I, I could be wrong, uh, but I don't think I am. So where is God calling you to surrender? What, where does God want you to experience a victorious life in Christ, but where you first need to raise the white flag of surrender? You know, you, you were given a, a, a white flag when you came in and, and a highlighter today. Mine's not white because I already wrote on mine. I actually wrote on three flags. Uh, got a lot to surrender. I had three services. I'm like, well, I'm just going to spread these out over three flags, Lord. Um, there are different things I wrote on, on each one, places where God is continually calling me to surrender. Uh, and I want you to, to consider, you see the flags before you. These are folks from the sunrise service. I want you to consider the answer to this question and write it down on your flag. Where is God calling you to surrender? Maybe it's an area of your life that you have been trying to control yourself, doing things your own way. I mean, maybe you need to surrender your identity. Maybe you've sought to find your identity in all other numbers of things, your achievements, your career, your body image, your sexuality, something else. Maybe God is calling you to surrender your identity and find your identity in him. Or maybe God is calling you to surrender your pride, your your. You're used to being in control. You're used to being right. You're used to being in charge. But truth be told, maybe it's wreaking havoc on your relationships. Maybe God is calling you to wave your white flag there. Or maybe God's calling you to surrender your greed, replace it with his generosity or your anger and replace it with his gentleness. Maybe God is calling you to surrender your right to get back at somebody or give them the cold shoulder, or wait for an apology, and instead offer forgiveness. Maybe God's calling you to surrender an unhealthy, sinful habit, or maybe just maybe God's got you in a place today where where you're finally just ready to lay it all down, to surrender your entire life to him. Really, that's, that's what you do when you become a Christian. You say, I have been trying to steer this ship myself forever, Lord, I, I give you control. I, I lay it all down. I surrender my life to you, Lord. That's what it means to become a Christian. And when you do, God fills you with the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes in and starts turning over some tables and, and kind of going through things and sorting things out and helps you find a whole bunch more stuff to surrender. You know, surrendering is an ongoing part of the Christian life. So where is God calling you to surrender? Write it down on your flag. And take a moment now, like, don't look at me anymore. Yeah, t- right? Uh, get, get, your, get your highlighter, write, write down, what, what is God calling you to surrender? You don't have to put your name on it. In fact, please don't. Uh, you know, what, what is God calling you to surrender? In a few moments, you're going to have an opportunity to raise your white flag and to plant it before Jesus. And when you do, when you, when you raise your white flag, you surrender your ways to God's ways, you're, you're taking the path Jesus took. Remember, your victory is determined between the if and the yet. When you're ready to raise your white flag, you're essentially saying to God, yet not my will, but yours be done. And guess what happens when you do that? You can experience that same victory of Jesus over sin and death. It's kind of like, Kind of like having a spiritual Michael Jordan on your team. He, he gets the victory and you get to call it your own. That's the best deal there is. That's why they call it the good news. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier the song, Victory in Jesus. I love the lyrics. Uh, maybe you do too. Uh, are you familiar with, with the lyrics? Help me out here. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. That last line is what it's all about, folks. You ever think about that last line? He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Would you ever think, what is that about? Plunged me. Don't think about that in the bathroom. 
you know, that's, it's, he plunged me to victory. That's, no, it's, it's a reference to baptism. You probably already knew that. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Think about it, in baptism, in the symbolism of baptism, you, you, you are going down into the water. Like when, when uh, baptism is an outward sign of an inward grace that God pours into your life when you surrender your life to him. And, and so you go down into the water, you're surrendering, you're actually going through the motions of dying to yourself, surrendering your will for his saying, Lord, I'm raising the white flag on my whole life. He's plunging you to victory and then raises you to the victory and new life in Christ. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. You know, in the Christian life, surrender to God is the path to victory. Victory in Jesus over sin and death. So we are celebrating a white flag Easter today. God invites us you and me, to share in his victory, the victory of Jesus by, by raising our white flag of surrender. And after I pray in just a moment, you're going to be uh, uh, invited to come forward. The ushers will kind of dismiss us in an orderly fashion uh, to come and plant, plant your white flag, just like folks have before you. Uh, this is for, for anyone and everyone, but, but I, I tell you, you don't have to bring your flag forward. Uh, it's, it really, it's okay. Uh, in fact, I would recommend not bringing your flag forward if you're not ready to surrender. So it's, it's not worth going through the motions. Maybe you, you want to take it home and, and, and think about it, pray about it. But if you are ready to share in the victory of Jesus that he won on that first Easter by surrendering his will to his Father's will, uh, then by all means, come forward and experience the victory in Jesus that, that he won on your behalf. Young people, old people, everybody is welcome to do this. First-time guests, you're welcome to do this. Uh, Long-time members, you, you are welcome. Plant your flag, raise your flag. Let's experience victory in Jesus together. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, there, there may be some of us right now who are in that place of crushing, clinging to our life, wanting to stay in control, in charge. Or maybe we're, we're being crushed by the grief that comes from loss. Despite our best efforts, we haven't been able to hold on to everything or everyone we love. And we recognize how beyond our control this life is. And truth be told, Lord, if it were up to us, we, we would orchestrate things differently. If we were in charge, Lord, we would we would all choose to avoid the pain, avoid the loss, avoid the suffering. And yet here we are, trying to control it hasn't gotten us to that victorious life. You've shown us another way, the way of Jesus, the way of surrender. So today we raise our white flags. We surrender to your will, to your love, to your leadership of our lives. We confess that that often we try to do things our own way, and in doing so, we turn our backs on you. But in your great love, you have once again invited us to join in the victory of Jesus. If only we will raise our white flag. So Lord, I pray that your spirit would move in us now to surrender all to you that we might experience all that the victory over sin and death in Jesus means that victory he won so long ago. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.
And as we transition now from our time of surrender to the promise of victory in Jesus, I want to remind you to take home a flag as you leave, just as a reminder of what you have decided to surrender to today. So as we stand at the threshold of this new season, let us rejoice in the freedom and the power that comes from being a child of God, God the Most High God. With our hearts full of faith, our eyes fixed on Jesus, we press on to the prize. And so if you would, would you stand with me as we sing number 370, Victory in Jesus. We say hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Don't forget, I've got several things here to just remind you, so hang with me for a minute. Get a clear, clean flag, not clear, but clean flag. Take home as a reminder of what you decided today, the decision you made. Get an invite card, and I'm not sure, I think they'll just hand those out, I'm not sure, but it's an invite card for the upcoming series on You Asked For It. You want to get one of those. Also, have a picture taken over on this side. And if you're new to the church, 
I told you I had several. There are mugs back there. We would love to let you have one of those and just get to meet you and pick that up on your way out. Also, shake hands with someone and welcome yourself to someone. So let's receive our benediction. Father, as we go from this place, may we go knowing that the power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power offered to us as we surrender to your will. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless. Have a blessed Easter night. kind of suddenly because I, I came in late.